One of the frustrations to full VR immersion is that you're limited to your play space size. Without using teleport or slide locomotion, you're limited to a level the size of your room, instead of the large levels you'd like to be able to walk freely around in. To try and solve this, I'm exploring the use of redirected motion. In this method, I have the player walk in a circle around the border of their play space, and then rotate their play space, which to their eyes rotates the world as they walk, redirecting them to walk in a straight line in the virtual world. I then move the play space through the world as they walk forward at the speed at which they're walking. Suddenly we can traverse unlimited distances without having to revert to teleportation or sliding locomotion. Does this feel extremely unnatural as you walk? The size of the play space is what makes the difference. Three years ago, when the Vive was released, I tried this method in a room-sized play space. Let's just say it was a drunken DUI simulator and I got very motion sick. With the Quest release, I'm able to do it in a 25 foot by 25 foot play space and it makes a huge difference. I no longer get motion sick and the redirection is far more subtle. It feels a little bit like when the alignment of your car wheels are slightly off and you have to compensate for it. It's a slight pulling in one direction. Your mileage will probably vary, but it was subtle enough for me that it is worth it for the walking locomotion that it opens up. And the times when it is redirecting you is only when you need to traverse distances larger than your play space in a straight line. Depending on level design, for the majority of the time you could be exploring rooms. As soon as you leave the borders, the redirection turns off, allowing you to enter a room and perform whatever exploration or task the game involves, re-entering the redirection border of this play space only when needing to move on. This method of locomotion allows redirection in a left-hand hallway, a right-hand hallway, or even in a large room if you prevent the player from crossing the room, except for openings where they'd either cross the room to the other border, or be allowed to freely explore a play space sized area of the room. The methods I've shown so far seem that they would limit players to just traversing forwards or backwards. However, you can have them turn corners. For turning, you just turn off the play space rotation and have them walk however many degrees the corner angle is in their play space, and then turn it on again when they reach the new facing direction. There is a limitation in that they can only turn right if they're moving clockwise, i.e. they're on the left side of a room, and left if they're moving counterclockwise, i.e. they're on the right side of a room. The same limitation applies to which side of a hallway you can put doors they can enter. Using these rules, you can build rich and complex levels of any size for the player to explore. And though I've only shown the cliché dungeon hallways and rooms in this video, you could adapt this to any environment. Perhaps a forest path where you're walking among the trees. And perhaps the play space sized area that you get to explore in your walking are cottages among the trees. But really the only limitation is your imagination and how you can solve it within these rules. Give the APK I've uploaded a try and let me know if it was workable enough for you that I should keep exploring or whether you fell down and threw up. If you're going to try it, use as big a play space as possible, ideally all 25 feet by 25 feet the quest allows. If you do 10 feet by 10 feet, you're going to throw up. Make sure you don't have anything you could trip over or fall into in your play space. You are walking with a blindfold on after all.